Professor Seabrook, you were telling us something about the effect of horror films. Yes, well, these films are a superb outlet for our uh, frustrations. Mm -hmm. Instead of persuading us to commit crimes, as my colleague purports, horror films may help to prevent that very thing. How about that, fans? We show one horror film and keep thousands of potential criminals off the streets because they're all sitting at home watching our show. <laughs> This is a horror film, an archive performance from long ago, save for eternity in the future viewing pleasure of multitudes to come, at least until the celluloid finally decomposes and dissolves into nothingness. And shortly before that unfortunate and inevitable death, said film arrives here to breathe its last breath prior to a rather shameful demise. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent Van Dole. Flanking me is my trusty valet, Mr. Livingston, and my rather peculiar housemate, Miss Tangella. The reason I bring up the sad state of films on our program, dear viewers, is because tonight will be entirely different. This evening, we will be presenting a high-quality film for the very first time ever on television. Remastered in living color, no less. Prepare yourselves for the television premiere of 1977's Nightmare in Blood. A tale that revolves around a San Francisco horror convention where the attendees have the unfortunate circumstance of being accosted by an actual vampire. A touching and wonderful story suitable for the entire family. Wouldn't you agree, Livingston? If said family consisted primarily of axe murderers, sir. Uh... One can only help, my good fellow. But what's even more amazing about this cinematic gem we shall present for you tonight is that our guest will be the actual director of the film. Joining us again will be Mr. John Stanley, former host of the previous incarnation of Creature Features and the creator of tonight's fabulous film. John will discuss Nightmare and Blood and offer other tasty morsels of his time as the host of Creature Features. So prepare a suitable snack for tonight's film, perhaps tomato soup, and make yourselves comfortable for a wonderful edition of our miserable little show. Tomato soup, indeed. Stay tuned. Horror dripping into your mind, like the seconds of a time bomb into a false reality. Yet you crave the creepiest, scariest moments of this realm. 
These are the chilling stories from the deepest corners of the internet. Join me, your host, Spooky Boo, at www.scarystorytime.com. Get scared. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Kids will spend 15 minutes watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair, and if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television, coming up. And welcome back to Creature Features. We are with the elusive John Stanley. John, so nice to have you back. Vincent, so nice of you to invite me back. Well, you know, you're always welcome. I mean, anytime. If you want to come at three o'clock in the morning because your car broke down or perhaps you had too much at the bar. My God, I'll be we've, here next week. We've got space. We've got, we've got something like 30 rooms in this place. And the right? week after. I haven't seen them all. You may but, not be able to get rid of me. Well, that would not be a problem. In fact, you could fill in for me if I want to take a vacation to the south of France. Hmm. I've never been. Give me a call. We should both go. To I France. I think that would be nice, yes. <laughs> you and Maybe. me and French women. Who would do the show? Oh, we could get Kyle to do it. He'd, he'd oh. do it. He'd be all right. No. Livingston. He says Livingston. He, will. he won't. All right. This movie. I've been wanting to show this forever. Why, why haven't you given it to us before? Well, you know how it's a long way over here on foot. No, My it's true. And it's down. such terrible weather today. Thank it, you. You know, we try to do this on days where it's nice and maybe there's the moon out. Well, but, it's yeah. fitting for Nightmare in Blood because it took five years to get the film completed from the time we first shot the initial footage at the Fox Theater in downtown Oakland. Well, it's, I think it's going to take five years before we give it back to you, <laughs> at least. All right, well, we're going to talk about all the details of the movie. I want to hear everything. But first, we want to start this film because nobody knows what we're talking about. This has never been on television, from what I understand, right? It, no, it has not played on any of the regular cable channels that I know of, no. Never. Well, and we're certainly in a regular channel, so this is going to be extra special. All right, John, well, you stay with us, and you stay with us for Nightmare in Blood. Stay tuned. Coming to this theater next week. 
You thrill to the bloodlust of Malachi and the Crimson Demon. You pale when the guillotines of France were red with the blood of his enemies in the Zaroff doom. Now, see Malachi, Hollywood's top box office horror star, in his latest fright classic, The Crypt Ran Red. Ran red. Co-starring Wanda Evans as Cynthia, the temptress who lived too quickly and not long enough. Trapped by her own desires, she never saw the army of the undead which marched forth at Malachi's bidding. With Maria Nagel as Cassandra, the seductress Malachi could not resist, though her lips meant death. A suicidal state through his own heart. A self-sacrificing vampire. Curtis Nolan as the police inspector who knew his modern force was no match for the might of a thousand-year-old monster. Eduardo Nash as the doctor. He knew the answer to the mystery could only be found in the family crypt, but he dare not reveal it. I tell you, Professor, these killings are strange. Almost beyond belief. Hogwash, Doctor. Surely you don't believe them old superstitions. Rubbish. Never has the screen showcased such terror. And never has Malachi crossed the threshold from death to life with such foreboding power. Such deadly menace. Malachi rises from the grave again to chill and thrill you. Don't miss the Crypt Ran Red. Terrific. Just imagine, in about two hours, Malachi's coffin on that stage. You really ready for him, Professor? Pretty weird how he lives his role off screen. Oh, the fans eat that up. I mean, don't forget a box office gross of 10 million. All Class A vampire flicks. Yeah, Cindy's right, Scotty. Malachi, one of the screen greats. It's like having Lugosi, Karloff, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price. He's right up there with the very best of them. How come you always leave out Maria Ospinskaya? Because I'm a chauvinist. Hi. Hey, babe. Cindy. Hi, Barbara. Oh, hey, you're on, late. George. Yes, I got hung up at the health spa. Three overweight Good ladies. Good for your health. You get out there on the golf course and you'll forget about all your troubles. What do you think? It looks great. Good, Harry. Right, we got like work to do. All right. Spa. Find where she lies. Look conservative. Professor Seabrook? George Wilson. That's right. How do you do? Hi. Doing? Glad you made it. Good to be here. Is this your committee? Yes. Uh, uh, Cindy O'Flaherty, uh, George oh, Wilson. George is host of Fightflix. I'm going to be on the show tonight. Ah. Oh, and this is Barbara Castle. She's uh, helping me with the fashion coordination. How do you do, Barbara? And uh, uh, Philip Scott, Scotty. Scotty's handling the uh, writer's program and the film. 
This is uh, Harry Marsden, my cameraman. He'll be moving around. Just ignore him. All right. Oh. You know, Malachi's refused to be on my show tonight. Well, it's uh, rumored Brian? that he hates your show. And you in particular. Well, I don't Brian care. That's why I brought Harry. I'm determined to get an interview with him tonight, no matter what. Good luck. Well, good luck to you, Professor. I got a little surprise for you. We're having another guest on the show, Dr. Carl Unworth. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I hope to keep it a friendly discussion. Oh, well, now, this is something I'd really like to see. <laughs> well, here's another added thing. He's organized the women's groups in town, and they're going to have a demonstration outside the theater tonight. Tickets are hard at work, Billy. They're doing some of the promotion for us. Malik, I would love to hear you think that way, Billy Boy. Those must be the two PR men, Harris and... Oh. Mr. Uh, Harris. <clears throat> Mr. Harris, how are you? How are you? And Mr... Just uh, call me B.B. Uh, uh, B.B. You must be Professor Seaver. Yes, I am. Nice to meet you, Professor. Nice uh, to meet you. This little darling? Uh, this is uh, one of uh, my associates on the committee, Cindy O'Flaherty, uh, uh, Bibi. Cindy O'Flaherty. How do you do? Mr. Harris. Uh, publicity purposes. Well, we're still getting things together. We should be ready in a day or so. Now then, before Malachi arrives, there are a few strict rules he insists upon. In the tradition of the screen greats, he feels he must live the role of the vampire at all times. He'll have it no other way. Well, all of us understand the conditions of the contract and appreciate his attempt at reasons. Well, that's a way of it, Professor. Now, you take this cross here around Cindy's neck. It'll have to come off. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh?
and welcome back. You know, I'm really excited about this film. This is this is like probably the greatest film we've ever shown. I really? Mean, yeah. That's that's incredible. Like, we did, show some really bad films, and not intentionally. It's just that's all they'll give us. Did you recognize Kerwin Matthews in the opening scenes in the dueling sequence? I did not recognize him because I've never seen Hercules, as you mentioned. Ah, Kerwin Matthews starred in several Ray Harryhausen special effects movies, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, among others. He must be quite famous. He was working in an antique store in San Francisco, and we went to him and asked him if he would make a cameo appearance in our film. I don't he, understand. He you were antiquing and you said, oh, <laughs> look at you. You could be in our movie. So how it happened? Well, no, we had heard that he was working at this antique store. So we went there. Oh. We told him he had an opportunity to play a cameo part in the opening scenes of our film as a swashbuckler, which matched his screen image. He agreed to do it and we photographed it at the Presidio right next to the toll plaza of the Golden Gate Bridge, just a few really? feet away. Yes. Wow, so you must have had to overdub the sound, so we did oh, not Oh, the sound hear. was entirely uh, dubbed later, right. yes. Uh -huh. Oh, the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, the, the main villain, Malachi, he looks like Christopher Lee. Ah, he was Jerry Walter. He was a San Francisco-based character actor. He usually played uh, small roles in films. Uh, he did a Dirty Harry movie. Oh, I love Dirty uh, Harry. Invasion movies. of the Body Snatchers of 1978. He also had a part I in that. I love that film. Yes, yes. I would love to show that one. Do you think he could get it for us? And the minute we met Jerry Walter, we just, uh, Ken Davis, my partner, and I knew instantly he was the man to play our character, who is a actor in Hollywood who does nothing but vampire roles, known as Malachi. Well, uh, he's doing well so far. I've not seen too many teeth yet. Uh, I don't want to give away too many details yet, right. but uh, there's uh, more to this man than meets the eye. Well, I, I would hope he, he looks like Christopher Lee. He's not, is he still with us? Uh, ironically, Jerry died three months after the film was released. Isn't that ironic? No, that's that's creepy. It's like, that should be on like some amazing stories type thing. Yeah. Yeah, three, wow. three months later he died. That's too the bad. The film was just starting to go across America. It played at theaters for two years. But on a happy note, he lives forever. He in lives this forever in some Nightmare others. and Blood, yes. Right, right. Well, let's get back to Nightmare and Blood. We want to hear some more about the making of it on the next segment. But uh, stay with us. This film's good. I'm Winslow Seabrook. Ah, oh, Professor. I've read your novels and only regret that you have yet to indulge in the vampire genre. Well, that's something I've regretted myself. Perhaps after this meeting... As an actor playing a role, I assure you I have my own very distinct ideas of the vampire's place in contemporary society. Well, I'd like to hear those ideas. Certainly. Later, perhaps, during the convention. Ben Harris is a creepy little guy. That's PR men for you. 
Hatchet men working for Malachi out of Hollywood. I've got to get back to the spa. We close at 10. Come on over, Cindy, when you get finished, and we'll go for a midnight swim. By midnight, I'm going to need that swim. Malachi, I'm George Wilson. You know, Fright Flicks host. I've been informed of your program. <laughs> and of your tongue-in-cheek commentary directed at the genre of horror films. Well, it seems to be what the fans like. Indeed. That's a bogey for you, George. Let us set the stage, Professor. Okay, fans, I guess I'm the villain now. Everybody will have to leave. Oh, uh, there'll be time for more autographs later, okay? Everybody out now, please. Right this way. I think we've complied with everything that your PR man, Mr. Harris, and Mr. Oop. Be very careful coming up these stairs. They're really dangerous. This morning, one of our crew fell in there. We've slanted all the publicity so that the buffs will think that you're actually in the coffin asleep on the stage during the daylight hours of the convention. I intend to maintain a believability in the supernatural as best I can. Such a believability should be the prime motivation behind all horror films. An actor cannot afford to disappoint his fans. <laughs> and now, Professor, if you will excuse me, I have several public relations angles to discuss with Mr. Harris. Harris? He's, uh, gone. Hmm. Well, he must have left already. Oh, maybe just taking a little nap. <laughs> no. I guess everyone's gone. Well, let's go. Well, where to? Gary Arlington's comic book store. I told Scotty we'd meet him there. We're going to go over the uh, comic book displays for the lobby. Do you know how dismal everything looks when there's no one here? Here. We can lock up on the way out. So this is home for the next week, hmm? This is it. And does it suit you? Not bad. Oh, well, for such short notice. <laughs> it's another surgeon square. <laughs> you know. Practice is keeping you boys very proficient. <laughs> the Gestapo would call this subterranean chamber a safe house. One episode out of many. <laughs> it's more years than I care to count. Well, I stopped counting long ago. Good. What have you boys planned for the evening? Oh, a little nocturnal sojourn, perhaps? Sticking out our necks, you mean. Oh, come off it, Harris. You know you enjoy your little excursions into the night. 
So, you know, John, I am really loving this film. Ah, you did one. It's your first film, right? Well, it's the only feature film that I ever made. Well, I've never made a feature film. And I've never even tried, and I don't think I could. So, you must have had a few little mishaps, though, along the way. Well, uh, it's funny. We rented the Fox Theater in downtown Oakland from Robert L. Lippert, Jr. Uh, he was this is the a large son antique place. Well, he was the son of Robert Lippert, who made hundreds of feature films in Hollywood. Uh, so hmm. there was this film history behind all of this. But anyway, we rented the theater, and one week before we went in to shoot, an arsonist came in and set some of the uh, theater on fire. An Cer arsonist? Just, certain is this part areas of were, it wasn't uh, an accident. It was, you could tell that, the police could tell that it was an arsonist that did it. Hmm. Uh, however, we were still able to go into the theater on schedule, and we spent three weeks shooting all of our film. When we left, within four days, suddenly the arsonist came back and set fire now to the projection room, destroyed both projectors, destroyed the uh, curtains, you know, on the uh, on, on the stage and various other areas, so the theater was now unusable. It was just totally destroyed. I think this was an angry ghost and not an arsonist. Apparently, I mean. uh, there was, a, there was a, a, a group that was putting on musical shows at the Fox, and there was a rival group that apparently didn't want them to do it, and uh, the theory is the rival group came in with the arsonist and uh, was trying to destroy the theater. I, I think my ghost theory is more plausible than the angry band. Hmm. We'll have to see. You could be. You know, I have a ghost story I could share. Well, we're going to save that for the next segment. Mm. We've got to go do a commercial. Yes. But when we come back, we're going to talk some more with Mr. John Stanley, watch some more of his wonderful film, and uh, I'll probably do something interesting as well. Stay with us. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. In a world where monsters terrorize the waters and the dead are walking the earth, who will save you? The third annual Silver Screen Film Festival, coming to the Roxy Stadium 14 this February 16th through the 18th. Enjoy a weekend of indie films and cult classics with the stars that made your nightmares come true. See special effects makeup demos by Walter Welsh of Face Off and YouTube sensation Ellie Max. And when night falls, wine and dine at our VIP dinners with music and entertainment, with proceeds going to the Santa Rosa Wildfires Fund. Go to SilverScreenFest.com to get your tickets before it's too late. So you know what my favorite thing to do on February 11th, 2018 is? I'm afraid to ask. I love to go to the East Bay Comic Con, and we shall be going. I'll be with these two nincompoops, and you should come see us. We shall be doing fun stuff like watching films and eating popcorn. Or are we going to be watching popcorn and eating films? I don't know. However, the website is right here, so you should go see the website, sign up, buy a ticket, and come see us. Right? If you say so, sir. Right. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. You are watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. And welcome back to the show. While John is in the John, I thought I'd take this opportunity to address our mail. What have we got, Livingston? We've got a letter from Mr. Ted Donnelly. And he says, hey, Vince, I heard a rumor you have a guillotine. It's true. Where in the world did you find a guillotine? Where you find anything you'd like. Craigslist. And next we have a letter from 
Fredwig Blust. What kind of name is that? Polish, I believe. Yeah. Hello, Vince. You and the rest of the cast absolutely make my Saturday nights. Thank you. Are there any movies that you find too scary to watch yourself? Indeed, there are. Disney films. They're very sad to me when I cry. And this one is from, there's no signature. It says, dear current resident, aluminum siding for no money down, just call. And is this the last one? Indeed. All right. Dear Mr. Van Dahl, my boyfriend and I haven't been connecting lately. I feel like the spark is gone. How do I save my relationship? Sincerely lost in love in Lodi. I don't know why I get questions like this. Tangella, you've had experience in this department. How does she make the spark return and save her relationship? There you go. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It is almost a work of art. It is a work of art, Cindy. Reposing in four-color limbo since the year of darkness. Sure 1954. Like no. When censorship caused these works to wither and die. Never in your eyes. Nor in the eyes of those who appreciate the greatest medium of all time. The comic book. Ah. Vintage Wally Wood. 1951. Yeah, right. As you can see, the sands of time have taken away nothing. They've given only freshness. That gives me a chill, you know. It's a satisfying chill. <laughs> Looks like we could use a few new candidates on the board. Maybe we could fill it with some of those nice folks we met in the lobby. ...removed from the body and most of the blood drained. Ironically, the theater was presenting a double bill of horror films at the time. Look, uh, we're counting on you to give us a hand decorating the theater over the weekend. I stand by eagerly. I feel it is an honor to partake in the first of horror cons. Well, I hope it's not the last. You've really got this place together, Gary. A shrine for comics of all times past and of all times to come. What you see about you has come to symbolize my life's work. I've got to get to the TV studio. Fright Flicks seems to be where it's at these days. Mm. Can you handle him? Who, Unwer? Mm-hmm. He's a born loser. He does have a way of persuading people. The persuasion of the truth is stronger. Men will turn to ashes. Only comics will prevail. Well, I'll <clears throat> see you at the theater tomorrow, OK? Max, got it. Good night. Cindy, I'll walk you to your car. Oh, thanks. Good night, Gary. Thank you. We'll be ready to go in just a minute, Dr. Anwars. Uh, This is my oh, pet. So how'd you get Malachi to come down for this horror con of yours? He didn't want to come to the show. Well, we were lucky. We contacted his manager in L.A. Uh -huh. And um, he was free, fit into his schedule. Yeah. Plus, we're showing four of his films, too. And now, stay tuned for the incomparable George Wilson, coming up next on this channel with another Fright Flick. This is what we're about to go on. Good evening, fans. Welcome to Fright Flicks, the show for Saturday Night Losers without a date, the show for people with nothing better to do. I've been reading a lot of letters from you viewers, and you're all asking me the same thing. Why do you even bother, they ask me, to show two rotten films every week? Well, tonight we sort of got an answer for that. Instead of two rotten films, we're only going to show one rotten film, okay? <laughs> And instead of our first feature, we offer two distinguished guests, each with a different point of view about horror films. On my left, a man who actually enjoys the things, the noted author, Professor Winslow Seabrook. And on my extreme right, Dr. Carl Unworth, a psychologist who has devoted the last 10 years of his career to a crusade against horror films because he feels they contribute to the deterioration of our youth. In fact, this very program is featured as a contributing cause in Dr. Unworth's latest book on the subject, Rape of the Young Mind. This book treats horror films in some depth, 
And indeed, Doctor, you have an entire chapter on the vampire film actor Malachi. How come? The malignancy known as Malachi is indeed the core of my book, Mr. Wilson. His exploitation grade Z vampire films have sickened and poisoned the minds of young Americans for too long now. Why, it's an insult to the intelligence of any God-fearing Christian who knows werewolves and vampires do not exist. Here you see a man who in one breath claims to be the epitome of the cinema vampire, who has the audacity to call his work film art, and in the next breath, poses for this kind of trash. What an excellent time for me to mention the first annual horror con, which will be held right here in San Francisco next week with Professor Seabrook in charge. I'm uniting the mothers of San Francisco so they won't permit their children to attend this disgusting event. Once again, we Petitions are faced are now with a self-appointed censor who wants to tell us what we should or should not have. I've often wondered, Doctor, what's your personal reaction to a really good pornographic film? I've examined many such films. I'm sure you have, Doctor. Oddly enough, it's time for our first commercial break. Well, you've done a fine job taking pictures of all the nice folks for the board. It's just all part of the business of life. What are you two standing there for? Get busy, both of you. Is it your throw or mine? I believe it's your throw. Get the shakes, have you? I'm not doing those yet. Can you stand the shakes, Billy Boy? Tell me. You've got a fine attitude, Billy. My throat. Malachi appears irritated. I have the feeling someone's going to get it tonight. Well, come on now. Get on with your throat. Thanks for the swim. Sure you don't want me to stick around a little while longer? Cindy will be here in a little while. Everything's cool. Don't keep her up too late now. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Good night, babe. And so don't forget, next week at this same time, the famed vampire actor Malachi in his first feature film, Fangs Over London. Unfortunately, Malachi himself won't be here, even though he's in town, but <laughs> I can understand that. No one likes to review the mistakes of his youth. Uh, Professor Seabrook, you were telling us something about the effect of horror films. Yes, well, these films are a superb outlet for our uh, frustrations. Instead of persuading us to commit crimes, as my colleague purports, horror films may help to prevent that very thing. How about that, fans? We show one horror film and keep thousands of potential criminals off the streets because they're all sitting at home watching our show. Oh, it's a, a, a special treat, fans. In person, Malachi. I wasn't informed of this. If you think I'm going to sit, sit down. Me. You know nothing of horror, nor of the enjoyment my films bring to the young throughout the world. Like so many others, you want to suppress the creative imagination. You look for the illness in others when that same illness permeates your very soul. And now... And now it's time for a message. The only message will be directed at you with your shoddy attempts to make a mockery of the entire horror genre. You call it tongue-in-cheek, when it is a slap in the face of every decent horror film actor. 
tainted our images beyond repair. To my legions of fans, I must apologize, but I felt it was absolutely necessary to appear here tonight. Are you still here? Hey, Barb, you in the pool? Hey, Barbara, I decided to take you up on that midnight. of a man who's followed you for the past 25 years. City after city, always dug in us. We should have done something about the Avenger long ago. In the meantime, we still have four empty containers. I suggest you make another selection on the board. Why isn't the Avenger on the board? Just a moment. I believe it's mine. I saw her, Professor. Barbara. In all things so senseless. That's just the point, Professor. It wasn't senseless. This morning, someone carved up Harry Marsden. George Wilson's cameraman. Oh, my God. Blood was drained. Vital organs removed. Identical to Barbara's. It's beginning to sound mm. diabolical. Here's something else. Out of the three murders, two of the victims were in his very life when Malachi arrived last night. Look, I've been robbed. That man Harris, the PR man, he gave me this. Look at it. No damn good. It's worthless. Now, you people are responsible around here, and I'm holding you personally responsible. I knew he was going to cheat me. I could see it in his eyes. Now, I am holding you personally responsible. Okay, relax, relax. All right. Here. Good enough. <laughs> In the old days, they made good pitches. Oh, the captain of Dr. Caligari was real fierce. <laughs> oh, the hunchback. A real monster. Hey, Cheney, he knew. Look at this, Professor. Pretty old. Looks like a dime. No, it's not a dime. It's, uh, it's British. 1824. Yeah, it's a sixpence. Must be George the Fourth. 
I wonder where Harris got this. You know, there's something weird about those two. Granted, they don't fit the mold of the PR men I've known. Some new films have just arrived this morning. Guess I'd better screen a few, weed out the best ones for the fans. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Hello, I'm Vincent. This is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location, we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. And welcome back to Creature Features with Mr. John Stanley. You know, he used to host the show and he did a far better job than I ever did. Oh, but, no, no, no. And I knew he was going to say that as well, but it's true. <laughs> All right, so Creature Features. Oh. The scene in this film, you actually shot a scene from this film on the set. Of on the Feature. set of the, 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 the Bob original. Wilkins Creature Feature set at Channel 2. In oh, it's amazing. In fact, Bob is in a sequence outside the theater when Malachi arrives and is carried inside in a coffin. You know, I was looking for He's, him. I did not see he him. He was standing in the crowd outside. So yes. he did like he did like a, a, a cameo. It was a cameo part, yes. Now, did you make Bob stand in the corner while you were <laughs> shooting on his set? Did you say, Bob, go away. You're not in the film. No. Maybe well, later no, we'll Bob give you a... Bob was not in the scenes that we shot on the set. I know, I noticed no, that. No, he was only outside the theater. Fred Decker was there, too. He was wearing the apes costume. Oh. Fred Decker went on to do the ro uh, robot comics, I mean, the robot movies. Oh, well, I've and never many seen other, the robot movies. He became a horror specialist in Hollywood. Yes. Wow, wow. So, you know, I was thinking, this is like the best footage of the original Creature Feature set in existence, because everything else was videotaped, and this was like, Filmed. Yes, this is permanently on film. We can see exactly everything that's on a Bob set. You can see, you can see the top, the rocking chair, the skull with the candle in it. Right. Uh, watch horror films. Keep America right. strong. We the sign on the wall. We copied some of this stuff just as a tribute. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm I honored by I that. I don't normally keep anything this right, hideous. We feel honored by what you you did. Yes. Well, we are honored by your presence, and we hope you're going to stay with us for the rest of the movie. Uh, I have so it's, much more to tell you. All right. It's raining outside. Very very hard and he's got a long drive so unless you want to stay you should just stay stay I'll tonight stay. I'll stay Livingston's cooking up something nice I'll all right you stay with us back to nightmare in blood hey listen to this in Britain during the 1820s the law required that all bodies be given a Christian burial sanctimonious the British with growing classes of students the schools were forced to purchase their cadavers illegally in the case of dr. Knox he turned to Burke and Hare Hey, dig this. In just 10 months, they murdered 16 men and women, selling each corpse to Knox for 8 or 10 pounds. And their own demise? Knox exonerated of all blame, his career destroyed, Burke hung by the neck, his body skinned, his hide tanned, his skeleton put on the exhibit in a university's museum. Hare, a witness for the prosecution, released, vanished, and never heard of again. Oh, boy. In the old days, they really knew how to make pictures. D.W. Griffiths, Barrymore, Lon Chaney, uh -huh. 
They were the greatest. It looks like an electric shop. Bubbles all over. That's an X-ray machine. What do they want for that? Electric. Atomic energy. That's what I thought it was. Oh! What have we got? Looks like lumber. Oh, no. That's pieces of paper. Oh! Living down here. It's pretty crazy. I once believed that Captain Marvel truly existed. Proceed with your belief. Gary, I think those PR men are Burke and Hare, kept alive all these years without a trace of aging. And what ancient alchemy could have achieved such a miracle? Malachi. And what does that make Malachi? Maybe he's exactly what he says he is. A vampire. Do I believe it? Want to show me around? Sure, I'd be glad to. Just let me get a couple of flashlights just in case. Not afraid of the dark, are you, George? Ooh. Follow me. Guys? Hey, what are you doing there? Get away from that coffin! Stay back! Let me finish my work, damn you! Damn it, I said get away from that coffin! Hold on, sure. What's the matter with you? Are you crazy? <laughs> fleeting skirmishes. Oh, there he is. Oh, he was trying to pry open Malachi's coffin. With this? You fools. Now you're all in danger. We're in danger. From what? A real vampire? I suppose we should call the police. Police? For a guy who believes in vampires? Okay, on your feet. I guess you're right. County Hospital would be the best place. The only place. A head shrinker would be most apropos. Mm -hmm.
man in the ambulance. He was the one at the health spa last night. What are you talking about? God, I'll never forget that face. That's the link. He's on the same track. Scotty, that was Barbara's murderer. That man, he wasn't Barbara's murderer. No, but I saw him. He's the killer. He's not a killer, Cindy. You've got to trust me. It's a fantastic story, Cindy. But I need time to prove it. I just wish that I could understand some of this. But all right. I won't go to Driscoll. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks. Can you cover for me tonight? Yeah, you're covered. Good girl. I count on you both to keep an eye on that coffin when I'm resting. Sorry, Malachi. We were out taking pictures. Snapping new candidates for the oh, war. Fools! Have you no skill in your craft? The Avenger was here in the theater all the time. Give it the word, Malachi. We'll even skip the formalities. They're trying to kill me. Avenger has put himself in great jeopardy. He's right where we want him. Yes, we will skip the formalities. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa.
And welcome back to Creature Features. Thanks for staying up late with us to watch Nightmare in Blood with Mr. John Stanley. We are honored to have him with us tonight for the second time. Hmm. He was on our pilot episode. So uh, this coffin, this is, I've never seen a coffin like this. It looks like a yacht. Isn't that a wonderful bird's head? I know. Uh, my father designed that coffin. Your father did. Uh, he was a, a craftsman with wood. He liked to create three-dimensional objects uh, that usually depicted sea life, uh, bird life. Now, that is absolutely the most beautiful coffin I've ever seen. In fact, where is it? I might want to use it one day. I in wish hopefully the distant future. If I knew where it was, it would be here in front of you right now. It would be nice. You didn't it's bring any show and tell for us, but we have the film, which is even better. So speaking of the film, what, what made you do this? This is a large endeavor, which... Well, uh, it started as a project uh, between myself and Ken Davis. Ken Davis was a photo retoucher at the San Francisco Chronicle. Mm -hmm. He was also a painter of surrealism scenes, and we had a love for movies. Uh, I was a writer. I was an entertainment writer covering movies and you television. You still are? No, that no, was no only writing? for 33 years. All right. But uh, Ken and I would ride back and forth to work together, and we came up with the idea, let's do a movie about the world of fandom, science fiction and fantasy fandom. Nothing had ever been done before. Uh, let's create a convention where the fans all come. And, uh, and out of that initial idea, the rest of the plot for A Nightmare in Blood developed. And now fandom is like a big thing everywhere, Comic-Con and all this, and you were like 40 years ahead of your time. Well, yeah, I think, we, yeah, I, I, as I said, we had not seen a film that depicted that element of our society, and we thought this would we'd be kind of breaking, uh, breaking through there with that idea. That's fantastic. Some of the best things just come from a small conversation. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's see some more of this film. We've got a bit more to go through, but it's, it's a wonderful film, and you should stay with us, because John's going to stay with us, and I'm going to stay with you because I have to. I live here, and we'll be right back with Nightmare in Blood. You also believe Malachi is a living vampire. And I'm convinced that Bibi and Harris are Burke and Hare. Thank God. I can't believe it. You are the first person. The first person. I have been working alone for so long. I was beginning to think I would never find anyone who would believe me, who would even listen. Oh, I'm listening. Call me Scotty. Scotty? My name is Tobias Ben Halik. I'm Jewish. I'm a member of the Haganah, the Israeli Avengers. I was part of the original Jewish group assigned to track down fleeing Nazi war criminals. I have been concentrating my efforts for a very long time now on the man known to the world as Malachi. In the beginning, I thought I was pursuing a Nazi, but as the evidence amassed, I realized I was on the trail of something far worse, if that's possible. A vampire. A vampire who had been preying on thousands of human beings for at least the past several hundred years. Evidence? What evidence? I have evidence. Quite convincing evidence. Twenty-five years of evidence. I've got to get you out of here. How? Oh. Start with him. from the Channel Sea. In the Avenger, free as a bird. It's back to Surgeon Square. 
Aye, to face the wrath of the devil's own. Did you finish the job? It's gone. The Avenger got out ahead of us. Damn. All right, we'll get the Avenger another time. In the meantime, I believe, Harris, that it's your turn. I'll fix the board. Ah. That won't be necessary. The board's ready. <laughs> when an adult watches a movie monster strangling a movie maiden, he never for a moment believes that he is seeing anything that really happened. But when a child sees the same scene, oh God, when a child sees the same scene, he lacks the experience to tell the difference between reality and the make-believe of the silver screen. Oh, Dr. Unworth, who gave you your degree? Look closely here, and you will see a startling resemblance to Malachi. This would place Malachi in Great Britain at the time of Burke and Hare. Now, look at these other posters. Look at the photos. In each one, the face, and notice all of the different names. Maine, Emelak, Elaine Key. All of the names are anagrams or variations of Malachi. An incredible coincidence. This is a hell of an hour to apologize. Oh, all right, in the morning. What? Can't it wait? Oh, very well. Mm. Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and Executive King accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Everyone will want to know how you began. The world is obsessed with origin stories. What's your story? So you know what my favorite thing to do on February 11th, 2018 is? I'm afraid to ask. 
I love to go to the East Bay Comic Con. And we shall be going. I'll be with these two nincompoops and you should come see us. We shall be doing fun stuff like watching films and eating popcorn. Or are we going to be watching popcorn and eating films? I don't know. However, the website is right here. So you should go see the website, sign up, buy a ticket and come see us. Right? If you say so, sir. Right. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. You said you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're they're blocked too. Sutherland from Power Rangers and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Malachi's aristocratic background and his egotistical pride as an actor, he felt it was beneath him to seek out his own victims. He preferred accomplices. His early experiments brought Bert back to life. But after a short while, the aging process abruptly accelerated. And so Malachi began new experimentations for a better formula. Which he carried out simultaneous with a stage career? Yes. This is stage career during the Victorian era in England. With his own traveling troops throughout the depressed countries of Europe in the 1920s. And with an abrupt switch to the field of medicine as Hitler rose to power. Come, I want to show you something. Malachi and his henchmen were welcomed by Hitler who was already surrounded by monsters of different kinds. This is footage I myself took in July 1945 at the town of Kaufbaron, south of Munich. It was labeled a home for the feeble-minded and subnormal. It was another hideous link in Hitler's final solution. This was Malachi's office at Kaufbaron. He was in complete charge. We estimate he murdered at least 2,000 men, women, and children in his continual quest for the formula. When the home was finally liberated, several hundred corpses were found with their hypothalamus and pineal glands removed. Two of those children were my own. One woman was my wife. I'm convinced he lengthened the effect of the formula to two years. And after the war? Malachi, as we know him today, first appeared in Hollywood in 1947 to resume his acting career. By the early 1960s, a predictable pattern was forming. Every two years, a series of six murders would occur. I take it the six corpses were necessary to complete the formula for Burke and Hare. Never any variation. I tried to destroy Malachi a number of times, but always I failed. This afternoon I tried again and you stopped me. I now appeal to you. Will you help me to destroy this thing? You've got my help. Professor? Cindy? For Barbara's sake, if nothing else. I mean, it's insane. All of the pieces seem to fall into place. The comic ethos decrees that I aid in the destruction of this force of evil. I was just trying to remember. How do you kill a vampire? Sabra! You in there? 
Seabrook! Don't be frightened, Dr. Onward. This is, after all, a most amusing place for us to meet. Where is Professor Seabrook? Despite what you say in your book, Doctor, mimicry is a natural part of my talent. I warn you, Malachi, I'm not gifted with a sense of humor. <laughs> I've been all too aware of that fact for years, Doctor. Why have you brought me here? To see your expression. When you realize your life's work has been all foolishness and ashes. Violence and the macabre existed long before films came into being. I don't have to stand here and listen to this. I'm going You will to... do nothing. You will merely listen. What? horror novel did Attila the Hon read before he destroyed half the world? From which motion picture did Burke and the Hare conceive the idea to murder for bodies and sell them to surgeons' colleges? All of these stupidities I could overlook, Doctor. But for one fact, you so readily decry. The existence of the supernatural. What do you see, Dr. Olmo? We in the darkness do exist. We do <laughs> no, Harris, he's mine.
Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Me hearties, I'm Crazy Boots Martin and James the Red at the NorCal Pirates Festival, and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Creature Features. We are with Mr. John Stanley and his film Nightmare in Blood. The man in the robe with the necklace. He's got, it looks like a Shazam logo. I'm so glad you asked me about that. That actor was Drew Eshelman portraying a comic book store owner named Gary Arlington. Uh -huh. Gary was a real life comic book collector who in 1968 opened the first comic book store in all of America in San Francisco. The first, anywhere. Yes. He is accredited wow. not only with opening the first store, but he created underground comics one year later in 1969. And this is a famous thing, Oh, underground this comics. This was a whole new era in, in comic book uh, production, yes, and Gary was at the very heart of it. So he helped us to design the comic book set that you see in the film. Oh, that's not a real store? No, we designed, oh. we created that in an empty in an empty building. No wonder it looks perfect and clean and does yes, not have yes. people sleeping in the corners. And, uh, and so we decided because he was almost a religious figure to those who enjoyed comic books, we put Drew Eshelman in a robe and we had the uh, designs that you just described. He looks like a monk from yes, DC Comics a religious, or something. Yes. No, that's nice. And he's, he's got quite a personality to match that yes. as well. Yes, Gary had that personality too. So how long did it take you to make this film? This film took five full years. Like every day <clears throat> for five years you All, were behind the camera. Not every day, but almost. It took a year to get to raise the money to shoot the footage or initially. It took another year to find a distributor. Uh, and of course, it was one more year film. to finish the film with uh, the money for the music track and the editing, right, right. and it was all finished. And then the distributor backed down, so it took us one more year to find another distributor. And finally, five years later, the film went into release all across America. It was in it was in uh, distribution for two full years, playing first run, second run, third run, that's, fourth run. That's like run. Star Wars. It just you went on. It just kept playing. You were yes. like the George Lucas of, of creature features. And there have been two uh, subsequent uh, releases, a VHS tape release, uh, I think around 1985. And then finally, Image Entertainment released a beautiful widescreen uh, copy in 2004. And we're showing the HD, full HD version. You are seeing the full screen, and right. that is called, uh, uh, it was called Technoscope. It was a, very similar to the widescreen uh, Cinemascope. Right, right. Uh, it was Technicolor's version of Cinemascope, and it was the last movie to ever be made in Technoscope. Well, let's see some more of this Technoscope technology that you, you obviously are quite proud of. I'm proud of it as well because it's on our show and let's see some more of the film and we're going to be back with Mr. John Stanley and the film Nightmare in Blood. Stay with us. Much longer. Patience. 
please. We've become a formidable trio this past century. Bond has formed between us that is unique. I wouldn't want your impatience to destroy it. Something's closing in. Oh, come on, man, get on with it. I can sense it, feel it. Strong, forceful power. Good. No sign of them backstage. I saw no sign of them in the auditorium. No one has any objections. Oh, I would like that, Mama. Wouldn't pay me to touch that thing. The pleasure is all yours, Tobias. I thought vampires could only exist at night. Sunlight should bring about an immediate demise. Precisely. But there is no sunlight. This theater is too well cut off from the outside. No windows for the light to pour through. Of course. It's like perpetual night. This place is starting to get to me. They're in here somewhere. We all have a job to do. Our friend, the Avenger, is close at hand. He's brought some friends with him. I think it's time we laid him to rest once and for all. I think our chances are better if we split up. Are you kidding? If you think I'm going anywhere in this thing, I meant that we should split into teams. I go forth armed. You two may tend to the others. Ben Halik is mine. I look for Malachi alone. Scotty, you and Gary take the basement. There's a maze of corridors and rooms down there. Cindy and I will cover the backstage area. I will check the front part of the building. On with the business of life. In 25 years, you four are the first to believe me. Some members of the Haganah, the police of the world. There is very great danger. I just want you to know, I'm very grateful to you, to all of you. We better get moving. Good luck.
all this stuff? This is a uh, counterweight system made by Armstrong Power. 1927 or uh, 28. I... <coughs> I'm sorry, useless information. Could you please try and think of something useful? Just stay close. Gotcha. That friend of his, Harris, is. Yes. No! No! Oh, my God, he's still alive. It's impossible. I shot him three times. <laughs> Malachi's formula. It's made Bibi and Harris immortal. They can't be killed. Not with this, anyway. I mean, how are we gonna stop him? He'll be here in a moment. Got to think. How do you kill something immortal? Um, you chop it up into a million pieces. I mean, maybe it's still alive, but at least it can't hurt you. A million pieces. Or a pile of ashes. Cindy. Do you remember the thing? Which thing? The movie thing, RKO, 1951, played by James Arness. You mean Howard Hawks thing? Right. Do you remember how they killed the monster? Uh, they cooked it. With electricity. Right. Wait a minute. Come on. The other day when the lights blew out, I saw a cable along this wall. There it is. Look, the thing was a movie. This is real life. How do you know it'll work? I don't. Get the hell out of here! Oh, oh. 
Come This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Horror dripping into your mind, like the seconds of a time bomb into a false reality. Yet you crave the creepiest, scariest moments of this realm. These are the chilling stories from the deepest corners of the internet. Join me, your host, Spooky Boo, at www.scarystorytime.com. Get scared.
Jonathan, this is fantastic. It verifies all of Tobias's theories. The insidious stronghold of the maddened doctor. What course of action is now indicated? Malachi will hardly be spiritually enriched by your handiwork. Violence was never my particular lifestyle. However... went right through him. Behold, he lives yet. Keep this thing until he gets his belt. Let's see if this goes through him. Did not our say before, man will turn to ashes. Comics will prevail. Man, we've just had one hell of an experience here. <laughs> you should have been with us upstairs. I hear you. Tobias, has anybody seen him? We haven't. No. Hey, <laughs> hey. 
Wrapped up? The final traces of the lab are gone. The ashes of all three villains have been disposed of. I made all the arrangements. The funeral for Tobias is set for tomorrow. It will be a day of great solemnity. Just had a look at the auditorium. A great turnout. Getting a little restless, though. The gallery awaits. You've really better go. Welcome. Welcome to the first annual HorrorCon. We're all here. Because we share a common interest. We love to be entertained by horror, whether in novels, film, comics. We don't mind being frightened because we've always believed that creatures of the supernatural to be mere figments of writer's imagination. These creatures of the undead do exist. They walk freely among us, preying on us. We must now band together with a new goal. A goal that goes beyond the confines of this convention. A goal designed to warn others that these supernatural creatures do exist. Our power of belief is our greatest weapon in this coming battle. Malachi and his henchmen have been destroyed. But there are others like him still out there, waiting. Beware the monster. He walks among us. A star, David, to the face, three pokes to the chest, and Malachi is dead. What a great finale. Jewish revenge. Uh, you know, I'd never seen it, but, you know, it, it works for me. You know, every, every other vampire film uses other hardware. It's nice to see some variation. Yeah. So that was a wonderful film. Well, thank you. Very thank well you, done. Vincent. I thank mean, you. how do we finish with an ending like that other than to say what's next for Joan Stanley well at the moment uh, I don't have too much on my plate well this is good you're I'm retired. trying to enjoy my retirement a little bit you know I've you only been retired a couple of years now you should play some golf yes do you play golf no I, I don't play golf no. neither do I I never learned how I but feel I, like I do like smashing things with a stick <laughs> well I enjoy seeing old movies I, I really do. I do too. Old television series from the period when I was growing up. I really enjoy that. You know, Going I think it's something time. that happens after you pass 40, where it's like all of a sudden everything new, new, new is not so great. And it's like, yeah, I want to see something. Yeah, it doesn't something. have the appeal that some of the older stuff still has. Yeah, like I watch Monty Python because it reminds me of my childhood. 
<laughs> when I start reenacting the skits with Tangela and Livingston, and it's it's insane. Uh, I I know uh, I'm not supposed to be a horror fan, but I love western movies. Oh, I do as well. I love the genre so much. No, they're uh, great. The spaghetti western genre, the, the best. American West. They're the absolute best. Well, John, we want to thank you for gracing our chair for one more time, and we hope there'll be many more times, as always. But I right, um, thank you. You know, most of the guests I have are very nice, but you like know so many things. It's like you're uh, this encyclopedia, you're this walking <laughs> golden nugget of knowledge, and we love having you. Well, you keep turning the pages, which is good. We will. We will. And as for you, our lovely viewers, we hope to see you next time for another exciting episode of Creature Features. So, John, hmm. I'm thinking if you ever do a sequel to Nightmare in Blood, perhaps I could portray the resurrected Malachi. No, but you could wear the robe and the medal. Okay. Okay.